everyone, welcome back to today's video. So I'm in a slightly different setup today. I'm in the bedroom and I've got my new little cushion behind me so I'm feeling like this is a nice place to film at the moment. This cushion it was actually on my last vlog, it's from H&M Home and actually the other cushions behind them are as well. So it's a nice new little addition to the room. Anyway, that is a little side note. So images of those hopefully should be up on my new home account. It is Lydia Tomlinson Home on Instagram. And also if you don't follow me on my general Instagram account, it is Lydia Jane Tomlinson. So today's video, I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about my personal style rules. And I'm also gonna show cutaways and things like that of how I'm styling and how I'm implying those rules into my actual wardrobe. So you kind of get to see a little bit more about how I actually implement those rules into my wardrobe, not just me sitting here talking. So my idea for this video kind of came about because I did a fashion Q&A over on Instagram and somebody actually asked me what my style rules were. And it kind of got me thinking like, what actually are my style rules? Because it's one of those things where I'll get dressed in the morning and I will follow like a basic rule or a pattern but it's perhaps something that I'm not really thinking about that much um, it's just something that I've kind of learnt and done automatically over the years so it got me thinking like what are my style rules like how do I break that down and translate that into all my outfits and how do I kind of build outfits from those almost innate rules that I've got embedded inside me and is my kind of style and sense of fashion. So I'm gonna break them down for you today and talk about my style rules. So number one, and I think this is one of the most important, is proportions. So for me, it's all about balance and almost like the feng shui of an outfit. So if you've got some, say, balloon style trousers, which are really in at the moment, I wear them all the time. Something I tend to do is wear a tighter, slimmer fitting top that tucks right into those jeans, just to give that silhouette down the body. However, I don't necessarily always translate that to the arms. So if I've got balloon style trousers, for example, I'll put like a puff sleeve with it or something to give it a bit more volume on top to balance out those proportions and kind of level it with the eye. So when I talk about proportions, what I mean really is kind of balance and how you can balance out that outfit. So for example, with an oversized blazer, it's unlikely that I put some really baggy wide leg trousers with it. And I think you can be a bit playful with proportions. So for example, you could wear maybe an oversized blazer and some wide kind of um, plazo style pants, but maybe pair that with like a tighter t-shirt or jumper on top, just to kind of give it that level of balance and kind of keep it all in proportion and have like clear lines in your sight, if that makes sense. So definitely proportions for me is fundamental to the outfit and it's all about that balance and how you can offset that balance maybe by having like a puff sleeve on top then a slim waist and then reset that balance with a baggier style of trousers and that is why things like belts things like that are quite useful so my second style tip is know what colors suit you and i feel like a lot of people really go wrong with this and perhaps think colours suit them that don't. And to be honest, I think that completely changes how a whole outfit looks because what looks amazing on one person doesn't really look as good on somebody else. So for example, for me, I don't really suit things like oranges or very warm camels or like pewtery kind of shades. I find them just really draining um, and they don't bring any light to my skin. Whereas on the other hand, things like very pale icy blues, greys, um, pinks, blacks, navies, things like that, suit me so you've got to really work out what does and doesn't suit you and I think you can I mean there are so many ways to do that you can just go online and have a look what colors are best for somebody with your skin type eye color hair color and you can put all those in and get like a color kind of code for what you should be wearing I mean I think the thing is there is maybe a tone of every color that suits people but it's working out what that tone is so if you love green but you don't think you suit an emerald green, for example. You might suit like a dark foresty green or something like that. So I don't think it's as restrictive as it sounds, but I think it's really important to know what colors suit you. And I, as much as I love those warm autumnal browns and orangey shades, they just don't suit me. And I always regret it when I wear them because I just feel like it makes me look flat 
and yeah, it's, it's not good. Whereas something that really brings out my face and my skin colour and my eye colour and hair colour just makes the outfit look so much better, more expensive, just makes you look more fashionable, more put together and just, yeah, better in general. So style tip number three, kind of leading on from these two, is know your body shape. So these first three rules are kind of fundamental to you personally and what portions, shapes, things like that work on your body shape. So for example, trousers. I usually wear like a kind of balloon, tapered style, high waist trouser because I think that suits me best. So I usually gravitate towards trousers that are quite high waisted because my waist is a slimmer part of my body. Um, and then I often belt things because I want to emphasize that area. And then just something that kind of skims the thighs but then tapers in at the ankles. Or my ankles are something that I quite like to show off. I think they're one of the slimmer parts of my body. So I will wear those trousers to skim the thighs, come nice and in at the ankle. And that is more suited to my body shape. I also tend to stay away from things that are like high necked, cropped here, you know, they've been quite in fashion at the moment, especially in Zara, they've done like a lot of high waisted, not high waisted, high necked things. Um, Rosie Huntington Whiteley's been wearing them a lot, but for me, they just make me look a bit top heavy. So I try and avoid things like that. So know your body shape and then work around it. What are the things that you really want to show off and then start with there. Again, you can find loads of information online about your body shape, what suits you and your figure. For example, you might be the opposite to me and your waist might not go in as much. So find something more skimming and then your legs might be the best part about you. So find something that's really flattering on the legs and things like that just to really emphasize your best bits and make you feel as confident as possible and I think that is what dressing is all about it's making you feel as good as you possibly can to face the day no matter what industry you're in whether you're in the fashion industry or not um, but to feel your best and make most confident that is for me what style is all about so my next point is kind of trend avoiding. Um, not necessarily to kind of forget trends altogether because I am one for keeping up with the trends and just seeing what's around. But I think trend avoiding or kind of not getting yourself sucked into trends because as we all know, not every trend suits every person. So if there's a trend you think you really like and really complements your style, maybe just pick up on it, but don't go crazy on it. I think you don't want to look like overkill and keep it nice and classic. That's how I personally kind of navigate um, the trends is just by picking little bits out of my favorite things rather than slavishly following them. I know we're, we're always told not to slavishly follow them, but I think it's really important because I think it's really easy in this society, um, especially on social media, to get very caught up in what's on trend and how you should be um, wearing these trends, etc. But it's not always the case. So try and avoid the trends as much as possible. Keep your classic wardrobe. And again, go back to all those points. What colors suit you? What's right for your body shape? Because wearing a trend that is not right for you will not do anything for your confidence, anything for your personal style. And you know, you'll probably just end up spending money and wasting it, which is something none of us want to do. This feeds on to my idea of always having a basic and capsule wardrobe and then building on that each season just with those hints of trend pieces. So I actually did a whole video, 21 pieces on my winter 2020 capsule wardrobe. So you can go and watch that and see what I personally think is suitable for my capsule wardrobe. But I think it's really important they have those fundamental basics as kind of like building blocks because although you can wear those pieces all together you might want to add in something a little bit more fun and a little bit more unusual and they really act as those building blocks and staples to do that so if you've got a classic white shirt you know that you can layer it with maybe like quite an on-trend funky jumper or if you've got maybe some basic leather trousers you know that you could get any kind of top and wear it with those. So as long as you've got those fundamentals in your wardrobe, you can use that to bring in different kinds of elements. And that as well definitely feeds into the idea of being more sustainable, having that capsule wardrobe and not going crazy by just buying loads, especially at this time of year in the sales, you can get a bit 
bombarded and a bit overwhelmed and end up just buying all sorts but if you know you've got your capsule wardrobe just think that you've always got that and then you're just going to add little bits in here and there to help both the environment and also your bag balance. So next up I want to talk about jewellery and accessories. So you've got your basic capsule wardrobe and it's the one that suits you and your body shape, it's very flattering and now you're going to add your accessories and jewellery and this is where you can really play about and experiment and there are so many affordable jewellery pieces on the high street that it's really easy to dip into trends and not spend too much money and also not be too wasteful as well. Any kind of jewellery and accessories is a really great way to do that. I personally know that I always love gold jewellery and layering jewellery as well, like my layered necklaces today, I always have multiple rings on, maybe a couple of bracelets and that is kind of my fundamental jewellery wardrobe. And then each season I'll add in something a little bit more playful, so over Christmas I've had a couple of pairs of big sparkly earrings, things that I won't wear day to day but I know that will jazz up all those basics I've got in my wardrobe already. And also the same when it comes to belts, things like that. Um, it's nice to add like a glittery belt in every now and again that you can put over your basic black blazer. And also a classic kind of black leather belt with gold buckle that you can just wear over and over again every single day. I think jewellery really maketh the wardrobe and completely transforms your outfit from being something quite plain and then you can just add all your pieces of jewellery and instantly looks really pulled together um, and really refined and yeah just kind of adds that element of your style in as well because a lot of people could be wearing jeans and a black blazer but when you've got your personal pieces on and you've layered them it just adds that something extra that you know it's your look. So something else that I really stick to is a neutral colour palette and again that's very similar to the capsule wardrobe but by sticking to a neutral colour palette, I know that most things in my wardrobe I can mix and match with each other and for me that gets so much more wear out of my wardrobe instead of having, you know, a pink and green jumper and a pair of stripy trousers that I can only wear probably once or twice with probably the same things. Um, there's very limited things you can pair those with. I know that I can go into my wardrobe, grab probably any of my jumpers and pair it with nearly any of my trousers and that gets so much more cost per wear and also so many different outfits. It's quite fun to just go into your wardrobe and experiment, play around with different things. And if you do have that neutral, block coloured kind of palette, it's really easy to do that and again, more sustainable, cost per wear, it's friendlier on everyone. So another really easy tip to look a little bit more stylish or do something a little bit different is by layering. So I've got this jumper here and I've layered it with this fancy little shirt from Zara. I'm not sure if this is still around, but if it's not, I'll link something similar. But just by layering this, it's instantly created something a little bit different. This piece can be layered with so many different kinds of jumpers. And again, this could be layered with different types of shirts, could maybe wear like a polar neck under here, plain shirts and different colour shirts, things like that. So definitely layering is key and also adds elements of different textures, different styles and just makes your overall outfit look a lot more interesting. So I could add maybe a leather jacket over this and then my coat over the top and a bag and instantly you've got different dimensions, really unusual things to look at, different textures, things going on but they're probably all in that same capsule wardrobe, neutral colour palette um, that works so well together. And I think that's another thing, instead of looking at basics and colour neutral colours as boring, see them as an opportunity to really style them up and work with each other in different ways that you've perhaps never thought of before. But it is, I think, important to just step into your wardrobe and really experiment and try new things. Something else I definitely, definitely think you should do is every time you come to dressing, think about what is missing in your wardrobe because if you're like me and every time you put something on, you think, oh, I wish I had one of these. And it could be something so basic, such as a cardigan that you wear under a blazer because it's too cold or something, you know, really useful that you perhaps 
need and you've just not bought and you'll probably have bought a trend piece instead and you know that you really need this one piece. Another example is that my mum always talks about wanting like a nice kind of evening cardigan that just goes with everything that she can put on, wear in somebody's house, wear out for drinks, things like that that's just really easy to use but it's one of those things she just has never bought. So definitely every time you go into your wardrobe and you think of something write that down and then you've got a little list of when you go out shopping you're not overwhelmed by everything that you see, you are going on a mission for that one piece and that one piece will probably transform your wardrobe completely and allow you to wear so many more things that you didn't even realise that you could wear together but just one piece could kind of be the cement that holds it all together. So my final style tip is to not save your clothes for best because I know a lot of us do that, we'll buy something, it might be quite expensive I know I've done this with bags in the past but I, I don't do anymore. You think I've made an expensive purchase, you're a little bit worried maybe to wear it out, you don't want to ruin it just yet and you kind of put it off and then you put it off and then you put it off even more um, and then it gets to kind of a couple of months later and it's kind of the second thing that you've got in your wardrobe and there's something else that's replaced it and you've still not got any wear out of it and it just becomes secondary and lifeless and you're bored of seeing it in your wardrobe. So my tip is to just go out, as soon as you've got something and you absolutely love it, wear it the next day, get your wear out of it because otherwise you just don't. You don't get any cost per wear. It goes out of date or out of style or you get bored of it and you know, what a waste of money. So definitely wear your pieces as soon as you get them. Don't save things for best. If you love like a really nice white pair of trousers, don't savour them because They'll probably get ruined eventually and what's the point? Just just wear them now, just enjoy them. The same if you've bought an expensive bag. Just go out and get your wear out of it because what is the point in buying it if you're not wearing it? Okay, so that is all my style tips. I hope you've got a little bit of inspiration from that and I hope it's kind of given you some guidance. I think sometimes at the beginning of a new year it's nice to reassess our wardrobes and actually think what what is really lacking, what do I need, how can I restyle this and hopefully this video has provided some inspiration on how to do that. If you have any questions for me, anything like that, pop them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well if you do enjoy these videos. I'd actually like to know if there's anything kind of similar to this or any other things along the fashion lines that you would like to know or videos you'd like me to film. Leave a comment for me because it's always nice to have some ideas in the bank for future videos. Again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye.